I'm Kathleen Leung. I am at the North Carolina Agricultural and the Technical State University. My email and my phone number are listed on the first, first page for you as a reference point or request any more information. And then we're going to start the webinar right now. And the other people are still logging in, which is fine. I would like to remind everybody, if you are not a speaker, please mute your headset or mute your phone to reduce the noise level for other listeners. And then also, please um, type in your questions. If you are familiar with the chat box or, Katie, we still have the chat box capacity, right? Yes. Yeah, she, said, she said yes. So please type in your questions in the chat box for speakers or for me and Katie or anybody else to participate in the discussion. And we appreciate your time to uh, share information and uh, following up with the updates with local food issues around the country. I'd like to thank USDA NIFA, particularly for their sponsor, their support uh, through the years with the e-extension system. Particularly a great thank you to Ms. Katie Wright with University of Arkansas who has been supporting our function, our service, webinar, email exchange, everything you want to know about our community of practice. Katie will be the best person to go to. And I'd like to thank all the presenters and participants to spend your time with us. Our agenda today is very brief. I want to spend uh, time for you to ask questions because we have a lot of information to share. I'm going to do a brief opening introduction about the e-extension, our particular community of practice relating to local food, what's new on our website, and what's new with USDA AMS updates that uh, we have outstanding leadership participating in today's webinar. And then followed by working group updates. We have several colleagues submitted information like they like to share with everybody on the call. And finally, we will do some announcements and discussion. To log into extension, e extension system is really simple. It's just extension.org. This is the main page you probably would likely to see. And it gives you different categories of membership, different initiatives, different subgroups, working groups, newsrooms, tools, especially for uh, service providers, extension educators, if you're on the call, or nonprofit, for profit supporters for local food issues. There are a lot of materials and the tools for practice up, uh, uploaded to the website for everybody to use. And I'm going to show you some of the recent ones. What we offer, we support program, curriculum sharing, case study, practice, evaluation method, article, publications. And we also have blog, Twitter, Facebook. Uh, some of you are more advanced than others in the Instagram, sharing information stories, and so on and so forth. The purpose is to connect people with a bigger audience. So everybody supports everybody's work, and we also share information. Then we get more support through our work. Some of the new information uploaded on the website, including the wholesale market for local food product, you can see over here. And then uh, Hungry for Change, there are some really good initiatives across different areas. This is, this is one example from University of Missouri. So if you log into the e-extension local food community of practice, you will see a lot of such information available for you to use and for you to contact the authors. This is a brief overview about what is going on, what's available for you to look at it. We highlight our people and then we highlight our resource. Every resource underneath the resource here is a link. So you can click on the link and uh, find out what's new, what's posted, and then so on and so forth. There are some really exciting new opportunities coming up that we'd like to share with you at the end of the webinar that was just a brainstorm and the people started doing it. 
uh, we would like to share with you. It was, the ideas were generated from the two days local food impact conference in Washington, D.C. that I just came back from Washington, D.C. yesterday. And we'll share more information as we go in the webinar. Our most common practice across discipline, across region, is people asking us to write letter of support. And it has been quiet for a couple of months because I assume all the RFAs were out and the people were thinking about what they need, how to engage with the e extension. Please feel free to contact me or Katie uh, for more information on how we can offer your support. We can do it in different ways. For example, you can plug in your students, interns, apprentices to work with the e extension service and the function to participate in information sharing writing, publications, even present in a webinar that we host once a while you know, across different time frame. There are a lot of different ways we can plug in young people into the e-extension service and learn about different ways to work with each other. So if you have any question, you'd like to work with, with us, you want to explore some possibilities, feel free to contact me and Katie. And we support majority of the requests as long as we can justify the time, the effectiveness, and the efficiency of using the grant. Uh, Katie's position, for example, has been funded through a USDA grant, and we are very interested in working with other partners to seek other opportunities because she just told me her grant will end at the end of August this year, and then we, we are not going to have any money to continue to fund Katie's work and her service, which will, will be a big yeah. loss. Yeah. Hi there, how are you? I'm glad we do have younger generation involved in the conversation, which is great. Now, next I'd like to invite uh, Deborah to share with us some of the updates from USDA AMS. We will have one slide. This is just for Deborah and uh, other people to know that I will do a summary of the local food impact conference reflection in the next slide. So Deb, you like to spend uh, two minutes with us to share with us some of the updates? Sure. Um, well, I guess let me start by saying that uh, I'm looking forward to your reflections on the conference. Uh, I thought we had quite a successful conference. If for no other reason that we had a full house of 250 mm -hmm. people, and it was the most diverse, concentrated group of local food researchers and interested practitioners, I don't know if I've ever seen anything more like that ever before. So I was terribly excited. Uh, you know, I have a couple of reflections too, but just going through these line items, let me first bring your attention, even though it's a little lower on the slide, that we were finally able to get the official release of our long, long awaited uh, community supported agriculture report on emerging business models for CSA operations that was published on Monday. Uh, I am arranging to get some hard copies. If people are interested, please let me know and I'll see what I can do. We certainly want to get the word out about it. And if you want to use it in any workshops or trainings that you do, uh, we certainly want to support those efforts. And uh, uh, hats off to Tim Woods, who may or may not be on this call, I, I can tell, but uh, he may be in travel status, but uh, he's been very patient uh, with our department. Uh, but we're delighted to have shared it, and it was, of course, announced, as you know, uh, Kathleen, uh, at the conference on Monday. Um, we, you know, uh, let's see, what else should I talk about before I get to the, uh, you know, if it's okay, I'm going to actually talk about the Economic Impact Toolkit in relation to a couple of reflections from the conference, since it was uh, a focus. Um, one of the things I wanted to share with those of you that weren't able to attend the conference or li listen to the live stream uh, was just mention the comments at the end of the first day from Walter Robb, uh, the former CEO of, of Whole Foods, who is still on the Whole Foods board. Um, when asked by Kathleen Merrigan, uh, former DEPSEC, uh, you know, is local food a fad or does it have staying power? His response was, not only is it not a fad, 
It's the biggest thing he's ever seen in 40 years of food retail. Now, that's a pretty strong statement. And I thought that was really not just inspirational, but really helpful for us as we frame our work to talk about why this has sustaining power. One of the other things he mentioned was how he saw the hallmarks of local food. And I, that really resonated with me from the work that I've done around values-based value chains was three things, transparency, accountability, and responsibility. Uh, and I think in, you know, as you move forward, uh, you know, perhaps we need to focus more on the, on the values aspect that local food systems represent and how the business models that we see articulate those values rather than getting overly caught up in issues around geography. Uh, in many ways, it's the attributes about the personal relationship, trust, uh, and responsiveness uh, that are really distinguishing these transactions. And I think that was a theme that came up for me quite a bit uh, during the course of the conference. Uh, a couple of other quick takes aways, because I, I know we don't have much time. Uh, you need to make sure people aren't reinventing the wheel. A lot of people have done, there's new data out there. People don't always know where it is. Uh, Don Filmini mentioned, you know, we may be looking to use the localfoodeconomics.com website where we house the toolkit as a place where we also offer links to available data sources that we may not even have mentioned in the toolkit. So, you know, it's an iterative process, but how do, how do we create greater knowledge? And of course, e-extension is very much part of that. How do we also partner more? Some of that partnership is just within the federal family itself. We had a presentation by HUD about their logic model for long-term community engagement, which seems very applicable to much of the work we do around here at USDA, and I suspect to many other groups. Um, and we, we don't really have a regular way of contacting these folks, so we need to make it work. We need to institutionalize some way that we're gonna have regular contact, exchange of ideas, and, and help each other move forward uh, in doing a better job of measuring. Lastly, I, I guess I would say uh, what came, what I observed was both the desire that we need to have some core common measures, certainly that's been a big thrust of the toolkit, and that will allow for cross comparisons and a better aggregate sense of what impact we're having. On the other hand, we need to be somewhat nimble and flexible because communities can be unique and have unique characteristics, and we need to make sure that the trust and the relationships and the values of the transaction are represented in our analysis and showing both economic and social impacts. So that's kind of where I would leave it. I don't know how you felt about it, but that's, that's my take. Great. Thanks, Deb, for an outstanding overview and uh, explaining the connections and relationship between what AMS is uh, achieving and how the local level, regional level, and the national level people have been creating some really exciting opportunities. Now, these things that I'm showing you on the slide are available on AMS website, and feel free to contact uh, Deb or Jeff or Hare for mm -hmm. more information if you have trouble to find information. But uh, yesterday in the conference, uh, they showed us uh, some really, really interesting new resources available for people to use. Now, uh, Deb had a great summary about the uh, Local Food Impact Conference uh, on the, this week, Monday and Tuesday in Washington, D.C. It was a packed conference. A lot of people had great inputs uh, and uh, great information to share with each other. I think we made some really good good connections across different disciplines, different participants, different kind of players in local food domain. I'm showing you a website. This website has a whole list of speakers, their background, their information, and the agenda of the topic and the subject covered in the last two days in the conference. But overall, we have a great list of programs, of funding, and the support that were represented by private and the public institutions. A lot of people uh, share the information in more detail during the conference about how they work with different partners, how they create relationship, and how to 
take the concepts to the field of practice and applications. So we heard a lot about success and challenges, particularly obstacles and the failure in local food issues. Uh, we spent uh, quite a lot of time talking about performance, validation information, and the evaluation process procedures. Mm -hmm. Some books, the publications we shared. And then the biggest chunk of the time we spent were talking about the data, which was the focal point about the impact analysis. How do you track the impact? People talk about different approaches, you know, combining quantitative approach with a qualitative approach. And the people share the examples using in-plane and several mapping systems to capture the richness of social network capacity. And then finally, everybody agreed upon the challenges to identify and gather consistent and uh, reliable data over time. That's uh, the gap that we're trying to approach and to collaborate. Now, yesterday, uh, we had a conversation with a group of people. We are seeking the possibility and the support through e-extension community of practice, local food, our group, to actually create a domain that we can capitalize peer-reviewed information for our partners, extension agents, collaborators to publish. Uh, we have a lot of white papers, case studies, uh, it, on different domain, different website, different agencies, and so on and so forth. We, uh, I think uh, Jeff uh, very nicely, I don't know whether he's on the call or not, but... Um, he's at the Jeff. fine conference right now talking about the tour. <laughs> he's, yeah. uh, he's a road warrior and he left like 9 o'clock last night after <laughs> we had a wrap up until 7 talking yeah. about it, uh, what we're going to do next uh, to, uh, yeah. off to uh, Boston. So. Yeah, uh, he's, he's really passionate about creating a host of information that can be peer-reviewed and shared, mm -hmm. even just taking a journal article information and uh, transfer it to the practical strategies, method, the kind of thing that people can actually do it. Because one question com came out during the whole conference was, so how is this relevant and how do we take the information from the research domain to the practical domain that people can actually use a lot, utilize it. So we see that is a service that eExtension can provide and I will uh, contact our chief officers to get their sense of how we can create this uh, service to our people who are doing fabulous jobs out there. All right, so keep can I, can yes. I make one mention about yes. where we're going with the proceedings? We have not yet decided exactly how we're going to follow up. There will be an evaluation, so people that have attended, I see many on the list here, uh, please know that GW will be sending out an evaluation form about the conference shortly. Uh, we will also be doing some kind of a video product uh, so that you could also use that for training and sharing lessons learned. Uh, we have not quite decided yet on what type of proceedings document there will be. Uh, I know that uh, Dr. Merrigan is interested in doing some sort of journal article. Uh, Jeff and I, I think we're encouraging her to think along the way of doing it around extension, maybe submitting something to the Journal of Extension about what we learned from the conference and what implications it had for outreach and training and where we should be focusing. Uh, so that has yet to be determined, but I think very much in alignment. And we did we didn't plan this ahead, Kathy, but <laughs> very much in alignment with what you just said. Mm -hmm. and yeah. So just stay tuned. Uh, just want to let you know that that's actively uh, being considered. Great. Thank you very much, Kathleen. Um, Duncan has his hand up. Duncan. Yes, hi. Um, I just wanted to plug the Journal of Agriculture, Food Systems, and Community Development, which does publish, um, uh, is interested in publishing on this content area. Uh, and to remind you that we do convert uh, a lot of our, our, we're going to begin doing this more, but we're converting a number of pr particularly practical manuscripts that we've published into the food policy brief. So they're converted into two-page summaries of, of these, uh, these journal articles, which makes it really convenient for folks out in the field if they don't have much time. And we, we 
convert that technical language, what might be a scholarly article, into one that's very easy to read, jargon-free and accessible. So just wanted to remind you that that resource is out there. Thank you, Duncan. That is really a good reminder for so many things. And I will keep that in mind as we continue our conversations internally here. I'm sorry, did I miss something? Oh, I was just thinking. I think you're still uh, muted. No, all I said is a thank you very much, Duncan. Okay, can you hear? I'm just thanking you, Duncan. Can you hear me now? I can, yes. I'm okay, just thanking you and saying that was a very good reminder. And I certainly will keep that under advisement as we have our internal conversations. Great. Okay, thanks, thanks again. All right, now uh, Deb said a little bit about uh, the local food economics.com. And if Don or Becca, are you guys on the call? You'd like to spend a minute talking about some this new is, development? This, yeah, this is Don. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Hi, how are okay. you? Good. I'm, I'm in a cubicle at the USDA, so I'm going to talk in a lower voice than usual and uh, shorter than usual, so I don't bother people around me. But um, I appreciate the time to give people an update on our committee's work. Um, as Deb said, we are continuing to do toolkit trainings, and those will be wrapping up this year. The four dates that we have coming up to around the country are listed there on the slide. Um, and uh, then um, we, we hope that we've uh, put enough legs on this that it's going to take shape as a community of practice. And that kind of leads me to um, really probably the main theme me and Becca want to um, share, which is this local food economics website that was created for the toolkit, we are going to reformulate. So it is an umbrella website for any projects that people are doing in the economics of local food systems that could go at the same site. And so our, um, we're basically putting on an invitation of if you have a link to a site you've created or enough content we can post we want this website to no longer be only the domain of the toolkit. The toolkit will have its home there for, for a few more years, but that we'd also like it to really be the umbrella home for any project that's looking at the economics um, of local foods. And, and that message was even reinforced this week at the Metrics Conference where people really felt like they did not know where to go look for um, good, uh, good examples of what they were doing. And, you know, the toolkit's a great example, but it's one very specific pathway people can follow to look at the economics. And we know people are out there doing price reporting and metrics and benchmarks and assessments in a lot of ways. So we want the website to take on more of a flavor of a whole realm of projects um, looking at those type of methods. Um, we're going to start making that transition ourselves because um, Becca and Alessandro Bonanno, two of my colleagues, got a new AFRI grant on Farm to School, and we'll start um, morphing that project into that site, for instance, um, as one example. But again, if um, you think you have a project that has enough form or function to share in this umbrella website as we um, reconfigure it um, to include not just the toolkit but more things, please reach out to us, and we will do our best to represent your project well. Um, we can't promise we can build a website for you, but we can at least make a posting site with a few umbrella subpages that we can we can get your work linked there. Um, but if you have a whole web page developed, we can also do a link to that as well. So with that, I'll, I'll uh, turn it back over to you, Kathleen. All right. Thank you, Don, for a few minutes. And then uh, there is a list of upcoming toolkit trainings here for you to think about if you're in that neighborhood, if you know somebody in that area who might be interested in a benefit from the training, please feel free to check out the event and the information is available on the website, localfoodeconomics.com. The next slide I'd like to invite uh, Lucy. Hi, um, 
Hi, I'm here. Hi, this is Lucy Diekman, and I am one of the co-leaders of the working group on undoing inequality in the food system. And our most recent project has been to start a webinar series on topics related to equity in the food system. We've been lucky enough to partner um, with the Sustainable Agriculture Education Association. And we held our first webinar in um, February, and it featured the latest edition of the Annotated Bibliography on Structural Racism Present in the U.S. Food System, which is put out by Michigan State University Center for Regional Food Systems. Um, so in addition to learning more about the bibliography itself, um, we also had a, a broader discussion with presenters and audience members about how to apply this resource, resource to one's own work um, and more generally how to take action to increase equity in the food system. Um, it was really exciting because there was lots of interest in this topic. We had 252 people who registered for the webinar and 170 people who attended. Um, so we're currently in the process of planning our next webinar now. The date is still to be determined, but it'll be sometime um, later in the spring, most likely. And this webinar will focus on examples of existing efforts within extension to promote equity in the food system. Um, I neglected to include my email address, but I'll throw that into the chat box momentarily. Uh, so if there's anyone on this call who's not already involved, I see a number of very familiar names um, in the participant list, uh, but you'd like to be involved or you have suggestions or questions, um, please don't hesitate to contact me. Thanks. Thank you, Lucy. And the more information you can follow up with Lucy, she will type in her email for you in the chat box. And we will also be happy to share the information with you after the webinar. The next person is Dr. Tim Woods. Tim, are you on the call? Yes, I'm on the call. Can you hear me okay? Yes, you're great. Crystal clear, so the time is yours. All right, well, uh, uh, once again, just a, uh, uh, props out again to the EMS folks for a great conference there. Uh, lots of super information and uh, lots of great networking opportunities to push forward. Uh, I just want to take uh, about a 120 seconds just to give a very quick uh, touching base on some of the things we're working on in Kentucky. We have uh, some of you familiar with our market ready uh, training program that's uh, training producers to sell into commercial market channels, and uh, we just finished uh, doing a program with the folks in Colorado, uh, just most recently finished working with folks in Louisiana uh, that are uh, down there looking at some farm to school programming. So we're seeing kind of some pretty exciting applications, and we're trying to develop some advanced topic webinars that are around those four business functions that are part of the market ready program. Uh, the other thing, though, that I wanted to mention, some of you may uh, know Allison Davis in our ag econ department. So she and I have been working on a, uh, what we think is kind of an interesting model for looking at uh, local food systems performance, and it's a local foods vitality index. And so we've done some uh, pre-testing with this, and uh, we've published uh, uh, some preliminary results in the journal Food Distribution Research uh, that just came out recently. Uh, but we're continuing to uh, drill down deep and we see a lot of opportunity to get some measurements from uh, resident food consumers and then another kind of approach that we're taking are some measurement of the various local food system components from uh, producers themselves recognizing that producers and consumers look at that whole local food system through a little bit different lens so uh, folks might have some interest potentially in following up on uh, some of that work uh, Devin mentioned our new CSA manager survey that uh, just uh, has come out, so I uh, would hopefully encourage folks to have a look through that and, and we'd love to get feedback. Uh, but I did want to also mention, kind of following up on that, is uh, a, another project that we've been working on related to CSA has been uh, really trying to measure the impact of an employer CSA voucher program through a wellness program that would be offered to employees, it's not too much like uh, the program initially uh, set up by folks up in Madison, but we've been looking at trying to revamp that uh, in Kentucky, and we've got lots of great data and things we've been working through uh, to analyze there, so you can uh, uh, see a couple of the early publications that have come out of that. 
Uh, the last thing I'll just mention is uh, just finished a, a thesis with a master's student on a on a topic that I think is also kind of interesting in this local food space relating to uh, legitimacy. And we've got some folks in the ag business community that have kind of worked in this kind of business literature space. But here we're trying to look at legitimacy of local food in the retail branding uh, space. And there's lots of interesting stories around the um, some people would refer to it as local washing, kind of a, a cousin to the green washing idea. Uh, but we've got some very interesting national consumer data that gives some kind of interesting perspectives on that. Uh, and we feel like there's a lot more opportunity to uh, dig in on that. So those are just a, some kind of quick updates on some of the things we've been working on uh, there in Kentucky. I apologize, I'm actually on my phone here, so it's a little difficult to, to see questions or see things posted, but Kathleen, maybe if you're able to translate those along, that would be great. I'd be happy to follow up. Sure. Katie, at the end of the webinar, will pick a choose and identify some questions. We will also compile the questions, and Katie can help us to do that. We can compile the questions and uh, share that with the presenters today all together. So some of you will be able to help and support other people in multiple ways. So uh, that's uh, Dr. Tim Woods from Kentucky. The next person is uh, Dilip. Are you here on the call from Tennessee State University? Hello? Uh, I'm not sure if the person is logged in again, you know, due to travel, a lot of traveling scenarios. Uh, here, I'd like to share the slide with you, just give you an update about what's up to at uh, Tennessee State University. You have the contact information, you have the phone number, there's something going on in extension and in research and all the teaching, sharing information. I see some organic certification thing going on, sweet potato production, tomato, and uh, some involves the certification course. So if any one of you had an, any question for Dilip, please feel free to type in the chat box and then we'll be happy to share that with our presenter. Now, Duncan, I know you're here. So would you like to spend two minutes to share with us about what's going on? I would. Um, I see you've adjusted my slide or was that, uh, seems like I might have sent you a more recent one, but that's okay, we're, we're good. Um, things I wanna mention are our Good Food Talk webinars. Uh, our next one coming up on May 25th is going to be a follow-up on yesterday's Local Foods Impacts Conference. Um, so if you missed it, uh, you have a second chance to get the latest on measuring impacts in local food. Um, some key presentations will be by NAFSA members, including Deborah and, and Jeffrey. I believe Rich Pirog will be joining that as well. And uh, Cheryl Danley will be in touch with you guys about that. Um, she does such a great job producing those. And we have as many as 2,200 folks tuning in. Uh, so we would like to welcome all the community, local, regional food system, community of practice members to those. Uh, and to, to join in uh, the conversation. Of course, uh, the CLP is, is also collaborating with NAFSEN on a food systems development training and certification in COP. And um, Courtney Long of ISU and Susan Kelly and Joanna Lilikas of North Carolina State University, among others, are helping us organize a pre-conference workshop at the Community Development Society NACDEP annual conference in Montana in June. Uh, and we will be engaging the community development professionals at that conference in uh, rotating table discussions of our four proposed competency clusters for certification and food systems development. That's a foundation cluster, uh, sustainable production cluster of competencies, supply chain cluster, and community food security cluster of competencies uh, that we'll be sharing and getting feedback on. 
uh, it's kind of a ground truth thing and reality check. You know, are we focusing on the the competencies that f extension planners, community development officials that uh, are are looking for training in food system development work? Are these the kinds of things that they need? Uh, and so we'll be soliciting that feedback at that event. Um, the last thing I want to share is that we've got a couple of new features on the NAFSN website. Uh, we've got a, an education and training calendar. We're updating that regularly so you can see conferences, workshops, uh, webinars, and events uh, from around the country uh, and find out what's going on uh, every day and every week. So that's one thing to check out. And another one is the Good Foods Jobs aggregator that we've established and we're, we're searching uh, around various websites uh, and keeping an eye on what's happening on Com Food Jobs and pulling out the, the best of these websites that relate directly to food system development pro professionals, uh, which it can include extension positions, uh, some of our positions, and we are not including things like uh, um, uh, uh, farm labor positions or, or internships or apprenticeships, but uh, everything else, which is basically a salary job, is going to show up on that aggregator. So that's a great place to identify um, employment opportunities. So these kind of professional development tools that we're putting up there are for, for uh, not only NAFSN folks, uh, but also for CLRFS, COP folks. Um, they're going to be public for probably until summer, uh, but will likely become a member-only benefit later this spring. So we'd like to see CLRFS members um, join NAFSN. They receive a 25% discount as a founding partner of NAFSN. Um, so I uh, hope to see more CLRFS members get on board with us and help us out with the curriculum uh, development that we're doing uh, in the certification program and uh, to get involved in producing uh, good food webinars and um, join in our meet and greets and other activities. Um, so, I, just a quick question though, the best way for us to share information uh, to the COP would be through you, Kathleen, or is there someone yeah, else, or can, Kathy Wright can, for that matter? You can send the information to both me and the Katie. Okay, great. And then uh, we will help you to uh, post it and uh, share it as a highlight in, under one of the resources area and then the people yeah people log into the our community of practice website will see you in the resource category too oh I'm on a webinar great now Duncan I need you to type your oh, website address just that. type in your website address in the chat box that's okay because we don't yeah, have okay. your website address on the slide you see oh, what I, I'm saying? Uh-huh. Uh, let me type that in. Hang on. Yeah, just sec. type that in, and then we can share that as a meeting notes with uh, our participants, and then we can post it, too. Okay. And for the, for the rest of you, you're on the call. Uh, if you're interested in checking out more information, more features, more opportunities with Duncan and the other collaborators on NAFSEN, please feel free to contact him and contact us. Either way, it will work. We're all linked in that sense. And then uh, hopefully we will see you in Montana in June and then share more information because we will do our group meetings over there. Okay. Thank you very much. The next person is from University of Minnesota. Do we have anybody from Minnesota here on the call? Yes, I'm here. This is Stephanie. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, Stephanie. You'd like to introduce yourself and uh, tell us about what you're doing? I turned it down. Hi. So this is my first time joining this quarterly um, call. So thanks for having me. It's been very informative. Um, I work at the University of Minnesota Extension in our Center for Family Development, and my, my background's in um, public health. And so I work out of the our health and nutrition program area and um, 
have been connected a bit with uh, eExtension. Last year, I was, I did one of the um, designathons um, for the I3 core um, related to our work around the Minnesota Food Charter, and so. The Minnesota Food Charter is um, in some ways like the Michigan Food Charter, Good Food Charter and other charters across the country, which um, is really a roadmap for Minnesotans having access to safe, affordable and healthy food and extension, specifically health and nutrition has had a role to play um, since the beginning. Um, so we, we've really developed this document with um, contribution of over 3000 people um, with kind of a health lens. And so um, one of the roles at Extension and the colleague, my colleagues have really um, played is, is supporting and enhancing local and regional food networks. And so the slide that you're looking at right now is a, a slide that we have um, of the food network work that we've done. And so um, back in 2015, we interviewed uh, 15 leaders of statewide and multi-state food networks from across the country. So Rich Pirag, who I saw is on this call, was one of the one of the people we interviewed, kind of gleaning experience both that he had from Iowa as well as Michigan. Um, but we ended up using that research to develop um, what we call now the Minnesota Food Charter Network, which is a statewide network. And Extension plays a really critical role um, in that work through a multiple, um, multiple ways, one through different action teams. Um, we have action teams that work on shared measurement and policy as well as um, aligned funding and learning and capacity building. But we also play a really big role in engagement with community partners across the state. And so um, we have a, a link here on our page, um, Food Networks in Minnesota. And one of the things that we've done is um, work to try to get food networks on a map, if you will. So we have over 70 um, food networks across our state and we're, we're doing our best to try to build the capacity of these networks to implement strategies in the food charter. And so one way that we did that um, is through a convening of Minnesota Food Network leaders this last fall, and that attracted over 72 people um, to really kind of begin um, kind of a peer to peer network of networks, if you will, um, to help support one another. And so I just wanted to say I'm really, um, I just got back from maternity leave last fall, and I'm really excited about um, learning from this group and all of you um, to learn more about the, the food network related work that's happening through eExtension. And um, I realize my, my email is not on this slide either, so I can um, share that in the chat. But if you guys are interested in learning more about the work that's happening in Minnesota, I did include at the bottom of the slide a, a shortened Z link um, where you can get um, more information about the work we're doing to support food networks. Great, thank you, Stephanie, and welcome to uh, our forum. We do this uh, every two or three months when people are looking for information. And uh, as you can see, uh, USDA AMS has done tremendous work trying to coordinate the work. And I think uh, your food charter is an outstanding example for USDA AMS to include in our networking capacity. And again, welcome uh, to joining us and hopefully you will continue to share the good work with us. Thank you and, so much. And uh, again, Stephanie will type in her contact information in the chat box for you. If anybody has any follow-up questions, please contact Stephanie. Now, there are some new resources that I get from the message, email, note, all kind of stuff, blog from time to time. There are some new ones I'd like to share with you. I think this came across from Duncan's uh, listserv about this uh, new resource, the National Agricultural Library. And uh, I will share this long address with you through the slide, and then you can check it out. Uh, it's a fascinating, the information available over there and a very good, useful source of information if you're looking for something tedious in uh, food or agriculture related issues. Another one is the National Farm Viability Conference. Uh, we do realize that the final submission of the proposal 
has passed. It was March 1st. However, this might be something interesting for some of you who are in the neighborhood who are looking for an opportunity to plug into the farm viability concept and to interact with some of the nonprofit uh, supporters for agriculture in the country. This is a good opportunity to go. And I also promised uh, somebody to remind everyone there is a share the kitchen survey link out there. You probably saw it from time to time. Uh, these researchers are really passionate about supporting the share the kitchen aspect. Yeah, do I have anybody uh, involved in that share the kitchen survey work here on the call? Not really. All right, but anyway, I'm doing the plug for them. If you ha come across the link about Shared Kitchen, please send it to the local managers or whoever you believe can help them to gather the survey. This is a national level survey. So the more response they could get, the better for them to work with the information. Now we have about 15 minutes reserved for any conversation any question clarification comments so this is open now how are we going to manage it it is uh miss katie right katie are you still there with us yes i'm katie. here all right so i'll let you take over from here is there anybody raising hand right now that we need to respond to no hands my hand oh Brian's hand? Yeah, Brian's hand. Okay, Brian. <laughs> I can't Brian? find the I can't find the raised hand button on my computer, so I'll just do it visually. <laughs> okay, Brian, you got a hand. So, uh, would you like to say a few words? Yeah. So very quickly, I added a, a quick note in the chat box about the uh, the leadership uh, national network <clears throat> uh, through e extension that we've started. We haven't re met. We we met uh, a couple times. Ah have uh, a couple of folks who are doing work who are uh, broken out into working groups on the intersections of theory and practice, for example, or leadership program delivery, uh, cultural competencies or diversity aspects of leadership. And one of our uh, key focus points, and, and it was actually born from this uh, network, is, is uh, thinking about leadership and local food systems. So when we were at Craig Chase's uh, shop, the Leopold Center, two year, or a year and a half ago at Iowa State, <clears throat> we heard from, and Duncan was there, Katie, several folks were there, and we clearly heard uh, local food systems practitioners talking about aspects of, we need to learn teamwork, we need to learn vision casting, we need to learn group process, a lot of leadership type things and uh, that was a surprise to us. We were expecting to hear them talk about um, the uh, modeling of, of uh, the economic systems and things which they also need, but they also talk clearly about the leadership things. So if you're interested in that, uh, type your name in the chat box and I'll sign you up and be glad to have you join that conversation. So hopefully we can help um, these groups. Thank you, Brian. So if anybody's interested to connect with Brian, the leadership, uh, development process, the, the working group, please feel free to jump in. This is a great opportunity. And Brian, if you're coming to the NAPDAC conference in Montana, uh, probably we can have a, a beer talk, you know, over <laughs> whatever. <laughs> well, beer is huge right now in the country. So Me? Every, hey, everybody knows, all right? So there's no secret here. Talk. We can do a local beer talk, a beer walk, and then talk about developing leadership that way. I'll be there early for the pre-conference, and uh, that would be a lot of fun. So let's plan it. Okay. All right. Uh, Katie, do you see anybody with uh, chat box questions? Yes. Blake Angelo said, is anyone developing organizational development tools for the changing state of federal funding? Um, and then I think a new emphasis on fundraising, strategic planning, marketing, et cetera, is going to be essential to keeping our ecosystem alive over the coming years. Anybody would like to respond to that? Now, some of these questions may take a few minutes to think about it, how to respond. Sure. So mm -hmm. if nobody takes uh, the answer right away, please don't be discouraged because th th these are serious questions. And again, we will compile the questions and the share 
with our membership, you know, some of you will respond to each other. Any other questions, KDEC there? Nothing. Our, no, anybody ask for network linkage or website information or any, any new resources out there? I don't know if anybody knows uh, USDA. Again, a plug for USDA AMS. They have a really outstanding diagram. And I'll uh, read you. I can't see my chat box. I don't know, who, I don't know where my chat box is. But uh, <laughs> Katie, Katie, please type this website link to the chat box with, uh, for other people. It's www.ams.usda.com. G O V and with okay. a slash mm -hmm. local food as a one word. Okay. It's a, they have a fabulous uh, way to frame the issue from land conservation to production, to processing, to aggregation, distribution, finally to market and the consumers. Uh, they shared this diagram yesterday in a conference and it's a fabulous way to help people to think it together in an integrated manner how the food system works. There's also a new database that I'm going to plug in here again for USDA. It's called a Food Link, F O O D L I N C. Do I have anybody on the call here who actually who is familiar with a Food Link? Would I like to say a few words about it? I guess Deb is not on the call anymore. But what is a food link? And I'm going to just read it, okay? It stands for Leveraging Investment for Network Coordination. It's a food systems initiative spread, uh, spearheaded by USDA with uh, philanthropic partners to increase farm viability and the food access by linking farmers to local markets. Yesterday, a young lady from Penn State University, Sarah, and I can't remember Sarah's last name, uh, but I think she's working with a daughter, St Stefan Getz, that many of you know, who is the director with the Northeast Rural Development Center. Sarah presented uh, her research using the food link data to uh, construct a social network analysis that can be utilized to identify gaps, intensity, and uh, in-between relationships in de developing a robust food system approach. If you're interested in the food link data, please contact Deb. And I'm going to get my screen back to the USDA one. Uh, Deb and the Jeff O'Hara will be the best person to respond to you about this database called the Food Link, L-I-N-C. And the research is conducted by Sarah with Dr. Stefan Getz at the Penn State University. Um, can I say something about that? Yes. Yeah. Deb, is this you? It's me. Yes. 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 So on Food Link, um, the best person actually to contact would be James Barr on the rural development uh, because it's our, it's an RD project. We have put some money into Food Link, but we aren't really administering the program. So we're sort of secondhand, and I, I personally, I don't think Jeff could either tell you much detail about it. So I would probably direct uh, those questions specifically, because that's what I would do. If you call, if someone contacted me, I would forward those to, to, to Jim. So, um, so Deb, can you type in Jim's name? I can. The let me just, I just sort of lost a picture here, so let me do that. In the chat box, so we can share. No, hold on, hold on. Yep, I'll get. I just I'm looking for his email because he's a little funky, but yes. Yeah, so it's so I'm just gonna put it. good link questions. It's a fascinating work, and uh, a, a lot of people were asking about that question yesterday in the conference. Katie, do you see anybody typing any questions about any source of information people would like to know? Yes, I have someone uh, who wants to know data sources with data that contains um, 
that contain consumers expenditure for different food categories such as healthy and unhealthy food are you able to hear me yes, yes. I'm yes. getting a lot of feedback over here so yeah that's all right okay. now one place to go for that information is actually um, Bureau of Labor Statistics the Bureau, Bureau. of Labor yeah Bureau of Labor's BLS the okay. Dep Department of Labor they publish the Bureau of Labor Statistics amazingly they have micro level data for food consumption expenditure purchasing pattern I guess it's not intuitively to a lot of people how would the Department of Labor relating to the food stuff but as a matter of fact they, they collect a lot of these micro level level data and they do training so I will be uh, happy to share that real uh, contact information with you after I find out where my chat box is but I can <laughs> I can type the message to the email so Katie uh, would uh, include on our notes okay uh, besides BLS source does any one of you on the call know any about this consumer consumption expenditure data information Ah, so so I just sent something that came across my my computer last last week, which is, I think some of this is is BLS, and I think some of it may be the American Community Survey, eating cooking information. I'm not sure because I haven't uh, dived into it yet, but just sent the links out because they may have something that's useful. Yeah. Okay. Hey. We have um, another two minutes. Anybody has any question or looking for anything that we could help you to find it? Katie, do you see anything there? I don't. See anything no. else? No? Okay. Today's webinar, we broke our record. We actually have <laughs> over... We have over 80 people logging in different time frames. I've been keeping track of the numbers. So uh, we really appreciate your participation. And this may be the last series we will do in the springtime, but because we, then we all go into the production s season, mm -hmm. this is going to be really hectic for a lot of participants to um, come in to the webinar. So the next time we will convene, it will probably be in late August and September. But we definitely will see many of you from time to time in different conferences, different training opportunities. And we will continue to share information through our website and uh, web link. Thanks to Duncan, Brian, Deb, and Don, Becca, and everybody here on the call. Your fabulous job to keep us all together and I continue to share resources in a very, very open and a very honest way. We truly appreciate that. So thank you for your time and we will conclude our webinar. The recording will be available mm -hmm. and the PowerPoint will be available. Any presenter want to modify your PowerPoint, please send me updated information. Then we will post the final version online. Thank you very much and we will talk to you soon again in the fall.